School has started again, which means just a few months away on the horizon is the holiday shopping season. A time full of warmth, cheer, and responsible consumership. And if you're thinking about buying a TV, during your research you've noticed you cannot escape these two characters. 8K. Since their introduction into the mainstream consumer electronics market, the amount of manufacturers selling them has gone up, and their price has slightly gone down. But in 2021, is it still worth it to buy an 8K TV? The short answer is no. And the long answer is no. Greetings, people of YouTube. My name is Elon Osborne, and this is my channel where I talk about movies, audio, and music. And today we're going to talk about 8K. Now, is 8K worth it to most of you watching this? No. But there are exceptions, so I'll be sure to hit those points as I go along. Because for the majority of you out there who are satisfied with the most popular TV sizes these days, I'm talking 45, 55, or 65 inches, 8K is a waste of money. Full stop unless you're Jeff Bezos or a sucker. Now, if you have a dedicated home theater with a 150 inch projector screen, or maybe you're a hardcore gamer with your Xbox Series X, PS5, or PC, then yes. Over the next few years, when 8K goes down in price, becomes more commonplace, streaming content is broadcast in 8K, perhaps 8K Blu-ray becomes a thing, an incredibly redundant thing, 8K projectors become better and more refined, then having 8K will make a difference. But even then, that reality is still many years off. Should I just end it right here? Can you just take my word for it? Sure, I could tune out already. Oh. Oh. Okay, fine. Never mind. Let's get into this, shall we? Just to quickly go over resolutions that we've seen over the years. 720p or HD means it is 1,280 pixels by 720 pixels. Multiply those together and we get almost a million pixels total. 1080p or full HD means 1,920 pixels by 1,080 pixels, which translates to a total of just over 2 million pixels. 4K or Ultra HD is defined as 3,840 by 2,160 pixels. That's almost 8.3 million pixels total, four times the resolution of 1080p. And then there's 8K, which is 7,680 by 4,320 pixels. Again, four times the resolution of 4K, with an astounding total of over 33 million pixels. But those numbers I just spouted off, that you probably already forgot, represent physical resolution. That means regardless of the size of your TV, 55, 65, 88 inches, the physical resolution will always remain the same. 4K will always have 8.3 million pixels within the dimensions of a 4K TV. But what does change is pixel density, more specifically the PPI or pixels per inch. The PPI on a 43 inch 4K TV is 102.4 pixels per inch, whereas the PPI on an 88 4K TV is 50.05 pixels per inch. Why should this matter to you? Well, the average size of a TV in any household is getting larger, but the average size of a living room remains the same. So if your TV is larger, but you're still sitting the same distance away from it, there's a chance you might start to see some pixelation or rough edges that you couldn't see before on a smaller TV. Let's say you have a 75 inch 1080p TV next to a 75 inch 4K UHD TV. When talking about resolution alone, in order for the human eye to resolve the difference between 1080p and 4K, you have to sit five feet away from the 4K UHD TV. That's already too close for my comfort. But now let's do the same comparison between 4K and 8K. In order for the human eye to resolve the difference in resolution, you'd have to sit 2.5 feet away. Yep. Reach out and touch 8K. But here's the thing. Resolution is just a fraction of what makes stunning picture quality. One can argue that HDR is what made 4K so much better than 1080p. As long as 4K has been around, there have been advancements in color management and brightness with HDR10, HDR10+, HLG, and Dolby Vision. 
And 8K TVs now have faster processors, better AI, and machine learning technology, which translates to much better upscaling capabilities than their older 4K counterparts. I like the T1000 compared to the T800 only you definitely still need to keep it away from molten metal. HDMI 2.1 is now standard, which means higher bandwidth and faster data transfer rates. A select few higher end 4K TVs have HDMI 2.1 ports, but all 8K TVs have HDMI 2.1 across the board. HDMI 2.1 can not only handle an 8K picture with a refresh rate of 60 Hz, but also a 4K picture with a refresh rate of 120 Hz. That is fantastic news for hardcore gamers out there, but even with bigger, better, faster, stronger processors, you really only should consider an 8K TV if you want anything above 65 inches. If 75 or 88 inches is overkill in your living room, 8K is a complete waste of money. Unless you like sitting three feet away and watching everything like a psychopath. You do you, bro. But what about native 8K content? It is honestly almost non-existent. Side note. Whenever you hear the term native thrown around when speaking about resolutions, it basically means it was filmed in the resolution you're watching in. No upscaling involved. There is very little 8K footage that was actually filmed in 8K or higher you have an extremely limited amount of YouTube and Vimeo clips in native 8K, namely natural landscapes and similar stock footage. NASA released some 8K footage of the Earth a couple years ago that's available for download. Nice to know our tax dollars are hard to work. Yep, the Earth is still around. Thanks, NASA. And that's about it as far as streaming sources. Xbox Series X and PS5 claim their AMD processors will be able to handle 8K gaming with frame rates up to 60 hertz when the time comes, but nothing is even on the horizon at this point to be the first video game rendered in native 8K. You technically can be gaming in 8K on a high-end gaming PC, but even then, there's only a handful of games to choose from that are native 8K. There are mobile phones out there that can capture 8K footage like the Samsung Galaxy S20, OnePlus 9 Pro, Asus ROG Phone 5, or Asus Zenfone 8. But given that much power in the palm of an average consumer's hand usually ends up looking like this. AK or not, you're no Steven Spielberg Todd, but there are two big reasons why there is little AK content out there right now. One. AK files are huge. Four times the amount of pixels, remember? Dealing with file sizes that big cause a cascade of problems for most computer systems. The editing process alone gets bogged down with 8K footage, and rendering visual effects in 8K would take days at a time. But even if you have a superhero level editing facility that can handle 8K no problem, you're going to quickly run into a data crisis if you don't have petabytes of network storage in place. Which brings us to... two. All the cons that I just listed boil down to one underlying factor. It all costs a shit ton of money. Owning a superhero level editing bay, owning petabytes of network storage, owning 8K cinema cameras, creating and rendering a video game in 8K resolution, all of it right now costs a fortune. And most of us don't have a bunch of you money lying around. And the costs associated with that extra bandwidth needed to stream 8K content means streaming platforms like Netflix, HBO, Disney Plus, etc. aren't planning on dealing with that shit anytime soon. This is usually the part of the episode where I break down the small fraction of those who do need an 8K TV right now. But I'm just gonna say right now, nobody needs one. And here's why. The introduction of 4K resolution paved the way for HDR10, HDR10+, HLG, Dolby Vision, which revolutionized the picture quality within those 8 million pixels. But the first 4K TVs that were released by Sony and LG back in 2012 did not have HDR. Did you know that? That wasn't until a couple years later. So I'm predicting that there's gotta be something, some technological advancement that's currently under development that will revolutionize 8K picture quality. But like the first wave of 4K TVs without HDR, this secret unknown new feature will not be compatible with the first wave of 8K TVs. So I'm gonna call it right here, right now. My prediction is 2024. 2024 is when that thing will come to 8K TVs, which will blow all of our collective minds. 
bottom line is, when the 2021 holiday shopping season comes and you're wanting a new TV, even if you're a hardcore gamer, there are plenty of 4K TVs that have HDMI 2.1, which gives you that 4K 120 hertz gaming experience that you've been craving. And they will cost much less than an 8K TV. But if you're in that small category of those with Jeff Bezos amounts of money to burn and you have to get that 8K TV now, do me a favor and get something that is bigger than 65 inches. It has to be bigger than 65 inches or else you're a sucker and you're basically getting scammed big time. So for now, get the latest and greatest 4K TV and enjoy that for the next few years. Because getting a 4K TV now and then getting an 8K TV three years from now will still probably be cheaper than buying an 8K TV now. And there you have it. I sure hope you learned something during this episode. If not, then Go out right now and buy yourself an 8K TV. It is so not a waste of money. Which TV is on your wish list for the upcoming holiday season? Let me know in the comments below. Remember to be kind to each other out there. Don't just watch TV and movies, experience them. And of course, always be listening.